This video is being sponsored by Likewise. Hi everyone, my name is Lexi. Welcome back to my channel. Today we have a very, very large book haul. So yeah. to see you guys. I hope that you are doing well. Today is going to be one of my very favorite videos to film and to watch, and that is a book haul. But before we get into the book haul, I wanted to thank today's sponsor, which is Likewise. Take it away, sponsorship me. Hello, everyone. I am here to talk to you a little bit about Likewise. Have you ever finished a book and thought, oh my god, I will never find a book I love as much as this one ever again? Sure. Likewise. Likewise is an incredible app and what it does is it actually helps you find things that are alike to other things that you like. So for example, if I've just finished a thriller that I really, really love, I can actually go on to Likewise and find other books that people recommend and their team recommends that are similar to the book that I really, really liked. Likewise is really, really cool because not only does it recommend amazing book recommendations for you, but it also has movie and television shows as well. So if you've just finished a really, really amazing series, but you don't know what to binge next, you can always check Likewise. When you're making your Likewise profile, you can actually pick which things you love, and you can even give specific books that you love too, so that the app can really get a feel for what you like and give you personal recommendations, which I really, really love. You can also recommend things for people as well. So if you see that somebody really, really loved a book or a television series, and you also have read that and you have a recommendation for somebody about something that you think that they will like, you can actually submit that and help them out as well, which I really, really love because I feel like it feels more like an interactive community, which is pretty darn cool if you ask me. I also really, really appreciate and like their curated lists. I think this is actually one of my very favorite features of Likewise. You can go through other people's lists of books that they have curated or television shows that they have curated, but you can also make your own and then share it with people as well. And then finally, you can also buy books from the app as well, which I think is super convenient. And if you're interested in learning more about Likewise, I will have the link down below. You can either visit them online or you can download their app. So again, if you're interested, you can click down below. You can use my link. You can go ahead and download the app, which is completely free. And you can make a custom profile where people can recommend you books or you can recommend them books. And you can also follow me on the Likewise app. I will go ahead and leave my username on the screen somewhere. So if you are interested in following following me and in learning more personal recommendations from me or if you want to recommend something, you can follow me, you can make a profile, it's completely free and it's really, really fun. Thank you again likewise and now back to the haul. Okay guys, let's go ahead and get into the haul. So I have a lot of books that I want to share with you that I have accumulated over the past couple of months, but I wanted to start with unboxing all of the books that you guys have kindly sent me. You guys know that it always touches me so much when you send me book mail and I'm always really, really, really appreciative. So I wanted to go ahead and start with unboxing some of your gifts. Beforehand though, I wanted to thank three people who have written me in letters. Thank you so much to Jess, to Victoria, and to Brittany. You guys are so sweet, and all of your letters made me extremely emotional, and I just want to thank all of you so very, very much. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with some of the things that you have sent me. The first thing is something that I'm very upset about, and I'm upset about it because I decided to open it, and I loved it so much, and then I lost the note and I don't know how I lost it. I'm sure it's just somewhere upstairs in my room, but when that happened, I was like, I'm not allowed to open anything else because I like to thank people on camera like when they are kind enough to think of me and send me something, and I just feel bad because I, I forgot who sent this to me. So if you sent me Fools of Howl Fair and also The Silent Companions, can you please send me um, either a DM on Instagram or just a comment so that I can thank you because I feel really bad that I lost your note. But here are two books that were sent to me. The Ghouls of 
Howell Fair is this really, really sweet middle grade. And this follows Molly, and Molly is essentially trying to track down the secrets of this old abandoned manor in her town. And then the Silent Companion sounds a little bit like an eerie gothic tale slash thriller. This is about a newly widowed woman named Elsie who lives in her husband's estate and finds a figurine of something that looks just like her, which she thinks is a little weird, but she thinks it gets weirder when the figurine's eyes start to follow her wherever she goes. I, I really wish I could thank you. I feel so bad. I'm so sorry that I lost the note. So this one here says, I immediately thought of you when I heard about this book. I hope you enjoy. Thanks for always sharing your bookish enthusiasm with us. The world needs more readers like you from Casey from Turn of the Page. Casey, thank you so much. That's so sweet. Ooh, oh, okay. This sounds really good. So this says The Mary Shelley Club. And you guys know how much I really, really, really want to read Frankenstein. So I'm already really, really intrigued. It says New Girl Rachel is eager to make a fresh start at Manchester Prep, but as a scholarship student, she struggles to fit in amongst the rich kids and finds herself turning to horror movies for comfort. She then gets caught up in a prank gone awry, going from weird loner girl to public enemy number one overnight. This kind of sounds like dark academia meets like literary thrillers. Very excited. Oh my God. Thank you so much, Casey. <gasps> this next one is wrapped. So this says, I'm reading this now myself and saw it on your wish list. Hope you enjoy it. Your videos bring a smile always when I need it. Hugs to you from Carleen. Carlene, thank you so much. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I have wanted to read this for such a long time. So this is called The Watchmaker of Filigree Street. And I remember posting this and wanting this for such a long time. So I am so excited. So all I remember about this is that it's kind of like historical fiction, but with some like fantastical elements woven into it. And it's about a man who goes and one day finds a pocket watch on his pillow. And then eventually that pocket watch saves his life. And so he is trying to track down who sent that to him and who made the watch. This is gonna be really, really fun. Carlene, thank you so much. You are so sweet. You always send me like the coolest books. I just, thank you so much, Carlene. Okay, the next thing was in this mysterious package which I've started to open up. So it says, dear reader, I don't know you, but maybe you're one of the lucky ones. Maybe you're living in a story that suits you with a neat three act structure and a cute happily ever after. Or maybe your story is dark and full of thorns. I think this was sent by the publisher. This says looking for a better once upon a time. And then it's got this really cool looking like, um, in. I don't know if you can see that. The print that comes with it is so pretty. So this is what it looks like. I don't, I don't know this book though. This is on sale October, 2021. And it says a spindle splintered. This is by Alex Harrow. And it looks like it is a reimagining of the sleeping beauty. It also has like a ton of reviews on the back. That is so cool. Oh, and this is illustrated too. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. Okay, I cannot wait. I don't know anything about this. So I will read this and I will report back. Thank you so much for sending that to me. Mysterious person, was it a publisher? I think it was a publisher. Thank you so much for sending that to me. Next, we've got another one that's wrapped. Hi Lexi, I just started watching your channel and I am already so excited to watch more of your videos. That's so sweet. Uh, this was my favorite book in middle school, so I thought you would enjoy. Much love from Meg. Megan, Megan, thank you. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm excited to see what one of your favorites was. Okay, let's see. Ooh, what is this? So this says The Secret Order of the Gum Street Girls. Oh, it's illustrated. Oh my gosh. Oh, I love the illustrations too. I have never heard of this before. I'm so excited. Franny longs for adventure, but can't even do a cartwheel. Prue can do a cartwheel, but prefers hiding under her quilt. Cat has no use for safety tips, but supposedly has ESP. And Ivy has had a seven-year-old string of bad luck. They have nothing in common except for the name of their street and the fact that they dislike each other a lot. Okay, I'm like really into this right now. This sounds so good. The four are thrown together when a pair of mysterious ruby-eyed slippers turn up along with the fashionable mad cha-cha staccato who bears a frightening resemblance to a certain wicked witch. This sounds so cool. And look, it has like this really, really cool map and it's like green inside with black. 
Oh my gosh, I am so excited. Thank you so much, Megan. I love that this was your favorite. Thank you for sending it to me. It sounds like something I will absolutely love. Oh my God, that's like a good scissor. Do you hear that? It's like ASMR. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, the next one is also wrapped. How exciting. The note says, hi Alexandra, thank you for being such an inspiration. You've reminded me of just how much I love literature. Thank you for being you and I hope you love this book. Um, I'm even picking up a copy for myself from Samantha. Samantha, thank you so much. That really means a lot to me. Also, I love that you're picking up a copy for yourself. What is it? Ooh, oh my gosh, it's called Nooks and Crannies. You guys, look at the cover of that. It looks so cute. So this is about Tabitha, and so I'm just gonna read the back. It says, Tabitha clutched the pretty envelope, letting one fingernail linger along the seam. Ludicrous or not, it was impossible to ignore the tiniest possibility that it might contain a small bit of light. And it is basically a summons from Scotland Yard to become an inspector in training, which sounds absolutely charming. So cute, and also I just, love the cover of this book. Samantha, thank you so very much. And you'll have to share with me your thoughts if you read this. So this next one says, hi Lexi, greetings from Germany. You are such a loving and kind-hearted soul. I hope you enjoyed this book as much as I enjoy your videos. Much love, Francisca. Oh my gosh, Francisca, that is like the prettiest name. Thank you so much, Francisca. <gasps> you guys love. It's the extraordinary education of Nicholas Benedict. A lot of you guys have known that I'm trying to collect all of these books and one subscriber very kindly bought me several and I think this is the final one I need to complete the collection. I am so excited, oh my gosh. Um, and it's it's so fancy in this like specific wrapping and everything, it looks beautiful. I won't tell you what this is about, but the series kind of follows like the secret society of children with like super intelligence and resourcefulness basically. And it is such a cool series. I really, really love it. And I'm excited to continue on with it. Thank you so much. Okay, the next one has two. Oh my God. Okay, so it says, enjoy your gift after our chat on Instagram. I hope you don't already have it. Happy spring from Carleen. Carleen, you're so sweet. <gasps> okay, so this says the library of the unwritten. Um, and this particular book is about a library basically that takes place in the afterlife and all of the characters that weren't like written into stories show up and this librarian kind of has to like try to track down a character who has escaped. What is this one though? Oh my gosh, this is the second one. This is the archive of the forgotten. Oh my gosh, so you know what? I can totally binge these. Thank you so much, Carleen. You are just like the sweetest. You don't have to buy me any of these and you're just, you're just so kind. Thank you so much. Next one. Oh, I can see the book. Oh my gosh, wait, hold on. Let me see if there's a note first. Thank you for sharing your kindness and joy with all of us. You've been such a light during this hard time from Zach. And this is from Broadway Bookworm on Instagram. Zach, that is so sweet of you. Thank you so very, very much. Ah! You guys, it's my favorite book. It's the BFG, but it's in the edition that I really, really wanted for the BFG. Um, so many of my friends have been sending in these editions because they know that I really wanna collect them. I have The Witches, I have uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Now I have the BFG, which is my favorite book from my childhood. Zach, this means so much to me. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. I, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. The BFG, by the way, is about a girl girl named Sophie who is an orphan and one day she is essentially kidnapped by a giant. So there's that. Okay, and then we've got one final one left. Can you believe it? I will say as well, I think that there are a couple at my PO box. So if you don't see anything in here and you did send it to me, um, it's possible that it's at my PO box. And in which case, like I will wait for my next book haul just because I really like to thank you guys as I'm opening the books. It's just nicer because I can feel like you're next to me and I'm actually like talking to you and thanking you. Um, so if you sent me something and I'm not open opening it, I will open it very soon in an upcoming haul or a reading vlog. And it's wrapped. <laughs> and this is from Franziska again. Oh my gosh. I, I swear, if I'm saying your name wrong, I am so sorry. I am so sorry, but you have the most beautiful name. It says, hi Lexi, much love from Germany. I hope you enjoy these books as much as I enjoy your videos. Much love, Franziska. Thank you so much. I wish I could hug you. Big love back. Also, I'm German. So love that for us. Here we go. She got me the girl in the tower. 
by Katherine Arden. This is the second book to the Bear and the Nightingale series. The first book was so beautiful. I think it was like a four or five stars for me and I've always wanted to continue on with it. So this is so incredibly kind. Thank you so very much. This series, by the way, is perfect for people who love like Russian folklore or folk tales. And if you love like a little bit of mythology, um, it's such a beautiful first book anyways. And I really, really loved it. So I'm excited to kind of go on with the next book in the series. And that is it, you guys, for all of the books that you have sent me. So without further ado, let's continue on in the book haul. <laughs> so as always, I have split these up into categories kind of for your convenience. So we will start with middle grade, then we'll go to YA, and then we will go to adult. And if you would like timestamps for any of the categories, I will leave that down below. First, I have Willa of the Wood and then also Willa of Dark Hollow. Both of these, by the way, were kindly sent to me by Disney from Disney Book Group. So thank you so much to them. I think you can technically read these both out of order. This particular one is, I think she summons this ancient curse. And then this particular one is about trying to save her forest. They both sound so wonderful and I just love the cover. So I'm very, very excited to read these. Next up is a book that I actually got from bookstore shopping. I loved that vlog. It was so much fun. I will link it above and then down below as well. But from there, I purchased quite a few middle grades and one of them was the Afterlife Academy. This is about a boy who is not afraid of anything and then one day he is actually struck dead by lightning and he then goes to the Afterlife Academy where he learns to protect people and then he is assigned a boy who I think is being bullied in school. The next book is called Hobgoblin. This particular book takes place kind of like in this fairy tale realm. But the thing that makes this so funny is that the realm, they're like named after farts. I'm sorry. I just... So like the whole thing is kind of giving me like stinky cheese man vibes. I think it's gonna be really, really funny. And I'm just really excited. I also think that the cover is super adorable. Next is kind of like a dark academia themed middle grade, which is very exciting. And it is called the Cavendish Home for Boys and Girls. And this is by Claire Legrand. So this follows Victoria who feels like she is pretty perfect and she befriends a boy in town. And then one day this boy mysteriously disappears to this school. Victoria learns that the kids in the school come out more perfect than before or they don't come out at all and she decides to investigate what really is happening at this mysterious school. The next book is one that looks absolutely charming and that is Orwell's Luck and this is by Richard Jennings. This is about a little rabbit who might or might not be able to predict the future. He becomes adopted by this little boy and he starts to leave this little boy mysterious predictions that start to come true. So is the rabbit magical or is it all coincidence? Next up is another recommendation from that uh, bookstore manager. I think her name was Gina. She was so sweet and she recommended this one and this is a mango shaped space and this is by Wendy Mass. I was really, really interested in this because apparently this follows a character who has synthesia, which is basically the confusing of senses. I love the back too. It says Mia appears to be a typical kid, but she knows that she is far from ordinary. She's keeping a big secret. Sounds, numbers, and words have color for her and no one knows and Mia wants to keep it that way. Next up, we have Fish in a Tree and this is by Linda Malay Hunt. I hope I'm saying that correctly. And the reason I was really sold on this one is because it is about Allie and Allie has dyslexia and we are following her journey. I feel like the representation of a character with dyslexia in a book is really important, I immediately wanted to purchase this. Next up, I, I don't remember if I've talked about this in a previous book haul, so if I have, I'm really sorry, but I have here When Life Gives You Mangoes, and this is by Corrine Getton. So this follows Clara, and Clara cannot remember what happened the last summer when a hurricane hit her island. And so the entire book is really trying to remember what she tried to forget. I love books with this theme. I think it's 
gonna be really, really fun. And also I heard about this from my friend Gavin who says that the twist at the end was really, really entertaining and that he did not see it coming. So I think this will be really, really good, but also it just, it seems perfect for the summer. And then finally, I have here the Vanderbeekers of 141st Street. I have been wanting to read this for such a long time. This is about a family. They're being evicted and they have to try to convince the landlord to let them stay. But I think it's gonna be really fun because apparently there are lots of kids in this family and they are all really, really fun characters. I think this is gonna be definitely a character driven story and it just sounds really, really charming. I've also heard really excellent things about this. So yeah, I really, I can't wait to delve into this one as well. So that is it for middle grade. Let's go ahead and move straight into YA. The first book I have here is The Female of the Species and this is by Mindy McGinnis. This is about Alex and Alex's sister was killed and the murderer got off kind of, I think, scot-free. And so Alex decides to take revenge into her own hands. So it's a little bit of like a thriller. I think that she is trying to essentially like take revenge for any person who has been mistreated. I know that this also focuses on rape culture, which I think is really, really important. And I've heard this is excellent. Next up, I have House of Hollow and this is by Crystal Sutherland. This is a YA kind of horror slash thriller or suspense novel. This follows three sisters who have mysteriously disappeared and then they come back, but they don't remember where they left. And then years later, one of the sisters disappears and the youngest sister, Iris, has to try to track her down. Next up is another book that I don't remember if I've talked about, but I really wanna talk about it again. And that is Legendborn. And this is by Tracy Dean. I think that this is going to be so much fun. This is like dark academia for YA. And all I really know about this is that this follows Brie, who is a student at the school, and she, I think, is invited to apply to a secret society called Legendborn, and the members are hunting creatures down. Next up is a book that I got from the used bookstore, and it still has the sticker. I paid $9 for it, and that is I Crawled Through It by A.S. King. This is a surrealist tale about, I think, four different teenagers who all have very unique things that they're dealing with that like they are wearing externally. One of the teenagers, for example, is turned inside out. The other one is building an invisible plane. And so they all have very like interesting elements to them. And we are just kind of following how all of their lives intersect. I'm very excited because I read a few of these chapters when I borrowed this book from the library, but I had to return it. And so I never got to finish it. And I think it's gonna be really, really good. A.S. King is such an amazing and very talented writer. And I've loved so many of her her book, so I think I'm really gonna love this. Next up, we have The Cousins, and this is by Karen M. McManus. This is a book that I've actually already finished, and this book follows three cousins whose families have all been disinherited by the grandmother who owns a private island, which is very, very swanky. And uh, as soon as I heard that, I was in. This follows them. They have all been invited to the island one summer, and once they are there, they realize nothing is as it seems. It's quite good. It I was a five star. It was a five star read. Highly recommend. I loved it so much. The next book is a book that I really want to read this summer and it is called Cool for the Summer and it is by Dahlia Adler. And it says up here, the guy of her dreams or the girl in her heart. So this is about our main character, Larissa. And Larissa has had this crush on this guy at her school for years. And then one day he finally starts to pay attention to her and she thinks that all of her crush dreams are coming true. But then there is a new girl at the school who shows up and it is the girl she had a secret summer fling with and now she can't choose which one to pursue. The next one I think is a little bit of like a dystopian novel maybe and that is The Ones We're Meant to Find and this is by Joan Hugh, I'm pretty sure. H-E, somebody told me how to pronounce this and now I'm doubting myself. This is about a girl who wakes up on an island with like lots of wreckage and she doesn't remember how she got there or who she is but she knows that she has a sister and she has to find her sister. And so she is trying to find her way off of this island to find her sister. I like the idea of like a book happening on an island. I don't know why, but I tend to like books that 
take place on islands for some reason. I also love books with like sibling dynamics. So the fact that this is really focusing on her relationship with her sister and trying to get to her sister just sounds really good. And that is it for all of the YA. So let's go ahead and move on to the adult. The first one is the only graphic novel I have and that is The Arrival. And this again I got for $7 at McKay's. What a steal! It is about a man who goes to this mysterious other world and there's actually like no text at all in this. It's all pictures and it's really supposed to like portray feeling like a stranger in a foreign world. I'm very, very excited to read this. I think it's gonna be really good. I've heard amazing things about it and the pictures are stunning. Next we have Clara and the Sun and this is by Kazo Ishiguru. So this is about Clara and Clara is like an artificial intelligence type of thing, kind of think like Suri or Alexa and she really wants someone to take her home, but she has been warned not to get too invested in her owners are, I guess. I love books that kind of explore like that relationship between technology and like technology thinking for itself. And I don't know, I just think it's really interesting. So I'm very excited to pick this up and read it. Next up, I picked up two different poetry books. This one is What Kind of Woman by Kate Bearer. And this one is by Margaret Atwood and this is Dearly. I don't know a lot about either of these, but I just wanted to pick up some poetry. Next up we have Slaughterhouse Five and this is by Kurt Vonnegut. This is a book that I actually read when I was in undergraduate school and I loved. However, I lent it out mistakenly to someone who then never returned it. A moment of silence for uh, that lost copy. <laughs> But anyways, I really, really wanted to buy this because I remember loving it as an undergrad student and I really want to reread it and then annotate it. This is following a man who comes back from the war and he is suffering from PTSD. But also what's really interesting is Kurt Vonnegut mixes in a lot of like sci-fi elements, speculative elements. He has a lot of really fun and interesting literary devices that he puts in this. There's time travel in this and there's also a lot of philosophy on life, which sounds like a mess, but it's kind of like like this chaotic mess that totally works and I remember really being moved by this book and I also remember wanting several tattoos from this book like the quotes in it were just so profound and good so uh, that's Slaughterhouse Five. Next up, we have a little bit of a thriller, and that is The Wives, and this is by Taryn Fisher. This is about different wives who are in this polygamous relationship with this man, but they're not allowed to like know anything about the other ones. And then one day, this wife like gets really, really curious about another one of the wives. She thinks that she might be being abused, and so it's kind of like this mystery thriller trying to figure out what's really happening under the surface of these women's relationships with this man. Next up is a book called The Butterfly Lampshade and this is by Amy Bender. This particular book is about a girl who was taken away from her mother the night that her mom experiences like this. It's described as a psychotic episode. She is too unstable to take care of her daughter and her daughter remembers eating a butterfly that was on the fabric from a lampshade. So she thinks that she brought this butterfly to life and then ate it. I guess she's questioning her own sanity and she's also questioning if she's just like her mother. And we are trying to figure out is there actual magic in this or what's really going on? I think it's gonna be really, really interesting. And I just, I've heard really fantastic things about Amy Bender, so I can't wait to read this. Next up is a book that is self-published and I heard about from BookTube actually, and it is called The Atlas Six. And this is by Olivia Blake. I think I'm saying that right. All I know about this is that it's dark academia. And apparently this all takes place, I think in like the library of Alexandria. And it also features a secret society called the Alexandrian Society. It just sounds really cool, okay? Like I love the fact that all this takes place like in a library. I love that this is dark academia. I've heard that this is quite steamy at parts too. I've heard that this has lots of LGBTQ plus relationships in this. I just think this is gonna be a really good time. Next up is a book by Helen Oyemi and this is called Pieces. This follows newlyweds who are going on a train ride for their honeymoon. But then once they're on the train ride, the train seems to be catered just for them. And it seems like no one else is on this train. And it also seems like the train is going through specific memories. It sounds really cool. It sounds kind of like this is mixing a little bit of like speculative fiction along with, I don't know, like having some magical elements in it. And it just, it sounds really good. I also love the idea of like this honeymoon being on this 
train and the train kind of being like possibly magical. I think it'll be really, really cool. Next up, we have another Dark Academia inspired read and that is The Betrayals and this is by Bridget Collins. So this says that this follows an ancient and elite academy hidden high in the mountains. Society's best and brightest are trained there for excellence and a great game. And this game is like this mysterious competition and it combines art, music, philosophy, math, and science. And it just, I don't know, there's something about that like dark academia setting of like this magical secret school that no one knows about with a secret society and this like very mysterious game. It just has all the vibes that I'm into, you know? Next up, we have some Greek mythology. The first one is A Thousand Ships, and this is by Natalie Haynes. I have been really in the mood to read Greek mythology. Like, I'm always in the mood to listen to Greek mythology podcasts and to learn more about Greek mythology, but recently, all I want is to read Greek mythology books. The only thing I know about this is that it follows all of the perspectives of the women from the Trojan War. And I really like that because obviously, Homer is focusing on all of the men's perspectives and most retellings focus on the men in the stories but the whole war is about Helen from Helen of Troy. Like it's about a woman, it's fought over a girl. And I'm very interested to hear all of like the wives and the cousins and the sisters and the mothers involved. I think it's gonna be really, really good. The next book is a book that looks really cool. I love the cover. It's called Sisters and it is by Daisy Johnson. I'm gonna go ahead and read this because this little part right here is kind of what sold me as to buy this book. It says, my sister is a forest on fire. My sister is a sinking ship. My sister is the last house on the street. And that type of writing, like, ooh, it just, it gives me chill. This is about two sisters named July and September and something unspeakable has happened between them. And basically this just follows them and their mother. Their mother is convinced that she has to move the family to kind of fix everything. But then once they are moved, the sisters start having weird vivid dreams. And then I think like this has speculative elements because I think some weird stuff starts to happen. I'm just really interested to see where Daisy Johnson takes the story because the premise sounds wonderful. Okay, and then next I have quite a few books that were sent to me by Book of the Month that I'm very excited for and I would love to share them with you. I almost dropped my book. <laughs> so the first book is by Jennifer Saint and this is Ariadne. And this is sort of like a retelling of the Minotaur and Ariadne. So Ariadne is the Minotaur's sister. And one day when this mysterious prince comes to her and says like, I need to slay your brother, she actually betrays her family to help this prince and she defies the gods. And we're kind of following her relationship with this prince and what that kind of means, like the repercussions. I am very excited. I've heard amazing things about it and I can't wait to read it. This is by Emily Henry and this is called People We Meet on Vacation. I've heard that this is for people who love When Harry Met Sally and that is one of my very favorite movies of all time. So I'm so excited. This also has the trope of friends to lovers, which is my favorite trope in romance. And this follows two friends. They kind of had like a fight and they went their separate ways and to kind of reconcile and try to fix whatever happened between them, they decide to go on a vacation together and try to be friends again, but then I think feelings emerge. Next up we have Arsenic and Adobo, and this is by Mia M. Manasala. This particular book is about a girl who has broken up with her ex-boyfriend, and then one day he goes to her restaurant and he drops down dead from food poisoning. Like, I think his food has actually been poisoned, and she is the chef. And so everyone thinks that it was her, but did she really do it? So the next book I have here is called the Hunting Wives, and this is by May Cobb. This follows Sophie, and Sophie has just moved, I think, to like this suburban location, and she really likes it at first, but then after a while, she finds herself feeling really, really bored until she finds this group of mysterious women, I think called the Hunting Wives. They're like this elite group who party and do mysterious things, and Sophie really wants in on this club. Next 
next one I have um, Imposter Syndrome and this is by Kathy Wang. So this particular book is following Julia and Julia is a spy for the Russian government. She is from Russia and I think they like locate her in California and she does all these secret spy missions for them. But then she starts to get close to somebody else named Alice and she starts to question all of the things that she is being sent to do for her government. Next up is How Lucky and this is by Will Leach. This is a book about a homebody. This is a book about a man who is introverted and he watches the world from his front porch. And every single day he actually watches a woman pass by his house and she does it so frequently that it's really become part of his routine is to see her and say hi to her. And then one day she does not show up and he becomes convinced that something has happened to her and that she has been kidnapped. The next one I have here is The Last Thing He Told Me and this is by Laura Dave. The flap says, before Owen Michaels disappears, he manages to smuggle a note to his beloved wife of one year, protect her. Despite her confusion and fear, Hannah knows exactly to whom the note refers, Owen's 16 year old daughter, Bailey. So I think that uh, this woman is trying to figure out what happened to her new husband while also trying to protect her daughter. And there's kind of like this weird unsolved mystery. So I think it's gonna be really cool. It sounds like a very interesting thriller. Um, and again, can't wait to read it. And there you guys have it. Those are all of the books for this book haul. So if you would like, leave me a comment to um, a book that you are excited to read soon. I might end up adding it to my Goodreads and possibly buying it myself because <laughs> I have no self-control. But I think that is it for now, you guys. So until next time, book lovers, keep your head in the clouds and your heart in a book. And I will talk to you very soon. Bye. Always think of you when spring comes Like it's something in the air